ConsoleDiscussions.com What's up guys? Greetings from ConsoleDiscussions.com Today we're going to take a look at both new custom firmwares that are just coming out. It's going to be 6.39ME and 6.39Pro. ME is going to be on this one and Pro is going to be on this one, okay? Now, there is a little bit of a difference in them. Uh, let's take a look. Let's go ahead and show you this. I'm just going to call it me for short for now. Uh, let's go ahead and turn these lights off. I do have cool little LEDs on my triggers. So, but yeah. Let's go ahead and turn those off. One second. Okay. Now let's take a look here. For for ME, it's going to be custom firmware. You have to have custom firmware or homebrew enabled PSP to actually install ME custom firmware, okay? For Pro, you only need 6.39 firmware, original firmware. This can be installed on any PSP you have, even the PSP Go, okay? So, that's a pretty cool feature. So, it, it beats HIN, you know? So, let's go ahead and take a look at this. I did want to let you know what firmware I had now. 5.0 M33 is on this one, and 6.39 is on that one. So, I'm just going to show you so you know. Okay, give me a second here. Okay. You can see, 5.0 M33 is on that one. Let's go over to the Pro one and take a look at it. Whoops, passed it up. Okay, and as you can see, 6.39 is on this one. Alrighty, let's go over here and go ahead and install these two. I did want to let you know that this one will be a little bit quicker to install because it is, um, it's basically just adding custom firmware on top of your original firmware type of thing. This one's going to completely take you to the Sony installer like M33 does. So let's go ahead and take a look. And I do want to let you know I am going to put both of these in the description below. So, if you want to grab whichever one you seem to like after seeing this video, I'll show you, okay? And I did want to let you know, before we continue, before you actually install these two, I did want you to know that you will need to back up everything, just to be on the safe side. Uh, do back up your saved data for sure, because it will actually corrupt it. The way it works is the if you actually played, say, SOCOM FTB3 on M33, you have to have a higher firmware than M33 or else it'll corrupt it after this since there's no higher firmware than M33 it'll corrupt so you want to back up your saved data before doing this now it may or may not work it may still corrupt it but it's worth a try it, it actually fixed mine so if you just back it up and restore it it should be okay so let's go ahead with the installation here's regular 6.39 ME or ME even though it says update, it uses a Sony update installer to do it. And here's Pro. So let's take a look here. So this one's already unpacking. And this one just pretty much is loading still. Verifying the update file. Okay, on this one. You have press X to install custom firmware. Let's see if it will clear up here. There we go. Press triangle to uninstall custom firmware. Hold L to reinstall custom firmware and R to exit. So we're going to press X. And it will go through all that and install it. It will say complete. Press R, or X, my bad. Press X to start custom firmware. And this one's still verifying the update file. Okay, now let's go ahead and install the recovery. Now this one says it's pretty much done. Just press X to start the update. Then it's going to start the SCE updater. Okay, that one's pretty much done over here. So we don't have much to worry about there. 
So we just go to system information to show you that it's custom firmware now. Let's see. Hold on a second. Yeah, okay, it doesn't show my Mac. So you're good. So it shows 6.39 Pro. Okay, B7. So you now have custom firmware there. And as you can see, my game is there now. It wasn't there before. So now I can play that. And I do actually own that game, guys, in case you're freaking out. I just backed it up. It does go faster. But you can see you can play it here. Do blah blah blah. But yeah, let's go ahead and return home. Now you'll see that you're on the Sony updater on this one. So press X. It'll ask you to do the usual stuff, you know. Reddit. Accept. X. I know nobody reads these things. If you ever seen that South Park episode where iTunes takes over like two three people and makes fun of the centipede movie the human centipede yeah that's pretty funny just thought I would bring that up I thought it was kinda of funny because I skipped through that I never read those okay back over here let's go ahead and turn this off while we wait on this over here and then turn it back on it's got a reboot here Let me work on this one while that loads. I'm going to go ahead and run the CIPL flasher. Oopsie. Got to do this first. <clears throat> This one's 37, 38% now. Okay, let's go back to the CIPL flasher. You gotta run all three programs. If you don't run all three, then it acts up a little bit. Yeah, if you, if you don't install all three of those, it'll just basically be like a hen thing and restart afterwards. So, make sure you install all three. Alright, so taking a look at Pro Recovery, you got your normal toggle USB. You have your run PSP game recovery, so basically um, it'll allow you to install custom firmware from running it. So if you wanted to overlap it with another custom firmware, you could do so. Um, you have your normal configuration here. You have whoops. You have ISO mode. You can choose Inferno, which is the Pro's original loader, the M33 driver, the Sony, and back to Inferno. You can fake your region, like usual. You can choose your XMB USB device, so you can choose it as flash or just memory stick, etc. You can hide your MAC address. You can skip the game boot and the Sony logo at startup. You can use the custom update servers to update your Pro. You can protect Flash in the USB. You can use HTML Viewer to custom save location. You can use Slim Color on the PSP FAT. So that allows you to, you know, use it on this one. 
Um, you have the Virgin Dot Text, you know, to bypass the Sony PlayStation Store, PSN Store. You have your Hide Pick Dot PNGs. Your Prevent Hibernation Deletion, which is PSP Go only, by the way. So that's what that's for. And then charge USB cable when, um, or charge the battery when USB cables are plugged in. Okay, go up here to back. Whoops. And then over here is complete, so you can restart that. Wait for that to load up. Then you have advanced. Your XMB plug-in, your game plug-in, your POPS plug-in, your no DMR engine. Your memory stick speed up. You can speed it up um, just in the VSH, just in the game, just in POPS. So both of these do support POPS. And um, you can just do it always in all three of them, or you can just do it in one specific one. Let's take a look over here one second. Um, so yeah, um, we do have custom firmware on this one too. We'll go ahead and go over here real quick and show you. One second. Okay, as you can see. One second, let it clear up a little bit. 6.39 ME. Okay. So now you'll be able to run homebrew and stuff like Day Dallas. So that allows you to run that. Back over here, you can hide your custom firmware files. So that that way the game can't know you're really being in custom firmware. You can block out your analog input in game. You can allow um, non Latin one ISOs. You can use old plugin supports for PSB Go. And then the Inferno ISO cache to help speed up the ISO. So those are some options there. Um, let's go back here. You can choose your C uh, CPU speed, XMB in game, and you know, etc. Okay. So then the plugins. I don't have any plugins. So registry. You know, you can activate your WMA and your flash, and then swap your buttons. And then. There is no exit on this XMB. You can just shut down device, suspend device, reset the device, and reset VSH. So that is the pro for you in a nutshell. Let's go over here to ME. You can toggle your USB, you can go to your configuration. You got your skip Sony logo, skip your game boot, hide your corrupt icons, game folder for the 6. Point, uh, XX kernel. Your auto run, so you can auto run in a file when you load up. UMD mode, you can choose M33 driver. You can choose your Sony. You can choose your Mi driver, and then back to normal, which requires UMD. Your OE legacy, and then back to your M33. You can hide your MAC address. You can fake your region. You can use VSH menu. You can use XMB USB device again, so you can change it to flash. You can use your slim color, so I can actually do that on my fat PSP here. And then you can use your network update, which you can disable that so you don't update it accidentally. Then you can hide your PNG, your pick PNG icons. You can use Virgin TXT just like the other one to hide or to basically mask your firmware in the PSN. And then you can speed up your memory stick again, just like in the other one. It works the same way. You have your um, always and all the modes speed it up. You have your VSH, your VSH and game, you have your VSH and pops, you have your game, your game and pops, your pops, and then never. So it's basically the same as the other one. So go back out of here, then you can do your recovery where you can recover your firmware in case something bad happens. Your advanced is going to have your advanced config which is going to be executing the OPNs, the XMB plugins, enabling those, disabling those. So basically, you can disable those all from in here. So you don't have to disable each individual one under plugins. You have your battery config. You can make your battery a Pandora battery, an auto boot battery, a normal battery, whatever you want to do. Then you have your toggle flashes for USB. Then you have your format flash and reset settings and then format flash 2 so that's under that 
CPU speed just the same. You know, you can change it to whatever to overclock it. You have your 20 out of 10, your 75 out of 37, your 100 out of 50, your 133 out of 66, your 222 out of 111, your 266 out of 133, your 300 out of 150, your 333 out of 166, and then your default. So that's for both modes. Okay, go back here. Then you have your plugins. I don't have any again. You have the same registry stuff. You can assign circle to enter, X to enter. You can activate your WMA and your flash. So that's it in a nutshell, basically. They're both really similar to each other, except, you know, one is going to be for all PSPs, which is the Pro right here. And then the other one's going to be just for custom firmware slash homebrew enabled PSP, which is going to be your ME right there. So they're both pretty good firmwares. They're both really useful. But personally, me, I'm going to install me on both PSPs because it just really feels like M33 to me. I just like me. Um, <laughs> M33 to me. Anyway, this is good. It does have a return to original firmware feature, so you can always go back pretty quickly. And yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. You can expect a few more PSP videos from me. I'm not completely gone yet out of PSP. It's just I've been really busy lately with work and such. But yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video, and I'll check out my next one. Peace out, guys.